Broadcasting from Oklahoma, the tornado capital of the world, home of the Oklahoma City Thunder and the University of Oklahoma Sooners. This is the Curated Experience Show, a weekly podcast about the customer experience with viewpoints you will not hear anywhere else. And now your host, author, and customer experience expert, Amos Tanuma. Welcome to the Curated Experience. I am your host, Amos Tanuma. And I have got a treat for you guys, uh, in this case, both figuratively and literally. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, are you still with me? I'm right here. I've got Chelsea Martin. Um, she is the co-founder of Nam's Bake Shop, and um, she'll, she'll be with us here for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Thank you so much for for doing this. Um, and I want to, I want to jump right in. We're going to post your information so people can connect with you, but really quickly give us a little background about how you, um, ended up, Bob, doing what you do today, um, sending deliciousness around the world. Yeah, well, I definitely didn't, um, grow up thinking I would land here, but I am happy I did. Um, this, whole company kind of came to be with a series of fortunate events in regards to um, where I was at in my life and my husband. And basically, we started dating in 2014. And um, somewhere around that time, you know, his family's meeting my family and um, we're kind of getting to know each other. And he, my husband, Trevor, came on a family vacation with uh, me and my family. And his parents had sent a really nice uh, gift basket filled with uh, cookies and dessert bars and things like that, that his father had actually made himself as just a side hobby. He was retired and uh, just kind of like to, I mean, he had, he had always done this even as my husband was growing up just as a side hobby, like to bake. And so he sent something over just as a really kind gesture. And I think something interesting that happens with a lot of people that try our cookies, which were his recipes is um, that traditional response of, wow, these are so amazing. You should sell these. You know, that's something that people think today. Um, you know, you hear that with anything. You make bracelets. I love this bracelet. You should sell jewelry. So it's right. the same. it was the same kind of response. And that's something that my husband, Trevor, had heard several times before because all growing up, you know, his dad was known as the cookie man and, you know, things like that. So it was very common for him. It didn't strike or leave any kind of like lasting impression in regards to it being, wow, we really should, you know, but I think that's a natural response. However, um, my husband is very entrepreneurial and uh, he was in a place in his life where he was kind of ready to like make a change and he loves building businesses or uh, working with startups and and trying to help uh, improve a business model and things like that. And so there was an opportunity at this juncture for him to work with his dad and also kind of get his dad to like go out and socialize and do something on a small scale. And, and so they started selling cookies at farmer's markets in local call centers. And I think seeing that reaction on, even though it was a very small local level, it was a bigger net than normal. I think seeing that same reaction and that same response to the cookies over and over and over really did kind of let them know, hey, we we might have something here. You know, we might actually have something here. But it's still, there's still cookies. We weren't interested in opening a storefront. That wasn't really where our heart was. And at the same time, I, uh, working in a call center actually for my parents, um, who they had a, they had a business in the Valley too. And so when I was working in marketing with them, I also saw them getting a lot of corporate gifts. And that's normal around the holidays, you know, you always get corporate gifts. And it's an interesting thing because they tend to be the same thing. And it's a gift basket. And that's to no fault of the sender. It's a very challenging thing to send an array of corporate gifts for the holidays to tell your clients or colleagues or partners that you care. But then it's also challenging to have to pick something separate out for every single one of them. So it is very common in the corporate gifting world to gift a gift basket or a, you know, fruit arrangement or something because you want to send a kind gesture, but it's, it's a lot of work on the senders end to have to come up with something special for every single person. So all of those things at one time kind of led us down this path of what if we had a space in the corporate gifting world 
where we can create gourmet cookies and cookie assortments, but actually position ourselves in the gifting industry to deliver something that, you know, no digs at the basket of pears, but it might be a little <laughs> bit more enjoyable, um, you know, just something a little bit more fun and delicious um, that also has a personal component so that the recipient, it's not that they don't appreciate the gift basket, but they do stack up. If you if you ha are partners with a lot of people, you might be getting 12 gift baskets yeah. of the same fruits and nuts and cheese, you know, so um, so this was kind of a unique way for us to jump in and, and say, how can we offer something that's highly personalized, but also really enjoyable and kind of marry the best of both worlds. And that's kind of where noms came to be. So we do provide gourmet cookies and, and we do pride ourselves on our product quality, but they come and they are shipped nationwide, but they arrive in a gift box that is personalized with your branding or your messaging or even the recipient's name to really have that extra personal feel that you just don't get with the generic corporate gifts. And that's kind of where we landed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, that's awesome. I, I want to I wanna sort of drill into something you said. So when I when I looked at, when I get, have guests on, I'm always curious what problems they're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's go to the main problem you're trying to solve, which is that if you think about people who listen to our shows, you know, um, folks in customer service, customer experience, folks in contact center and people trying to connect with customers. So what challenge they all face with, particularly on the front end of the customer journey is it is a very noisy world out there, right? Um, you know it. I know it. Um, every single day I am trying to get my messages out across the world and everyone's on the social media. And so it's very noisy. And so what I'm finding is the world is sort of retreating back to we went from there wasn't enough information to now there's now too much information. So it's difficult to get anyone's attention because we're all kind of in there. So talk a little bit about how you guys are thinking about solving that problem, because that was the thing that came to mind when I when I looked at some of it on the front end of the experience which is this notion of everyone is sending out mass emails and tweets and Facebooks and, and all of that. I mean, to the point that I'm, there are days I look at my social media team and go, I think we're just contributing to the noise. And so here you are saying, you know, here's an alternative. How do you reach people when they're no longer reading your tweets because there's so many of them? How about you do this? Talk a little bit about first, you know, uh, what opportunity you see in this world where people are trying to reach partners and customers and whoever, and the tweets and the emails are no longer working. And it, it does sound like you think cookies might be a less, <laughs> a, a more impactful way to reach people in a day where no one's reading your tweets anymore. <laughs> uh, well, absolutely. I will say, you know, we have quickly become the favorite at a lot of events when we're the cookie people because cookies bring joy to a lot of people. Um, but I will say uh, when we got into this, of course, we were inspired by the holiday gifting because mm. that was just time that we were. Um, right. We're developing it. As we've grown as a company, we've really started to work with organizations that have helped us understand that the value of gifting across the board in so many different places. And one of those is what you just mentioned, which is prospecting or even trying to get the attention of a client or a prospective client that you haven't been able to really connect with yet. And you really hit the nail on the head. So basically, direct mail used to be very popular. People would send things, you'd get catalogs in the mail, you would get coupon books in the mail, just everything through the mail. And that's how junk mail happened. And people ended up, you know, tossing it. And then email marketing happened. And that was a huge that coupled with social media is a huge um, asset for any company to have. Why would you not send marketing emails? Why would you not have social media? It's free. It's our, it's ours. We're in control of it. But what happens is your email inbox is now flooded because everyone feels that they have to connect with you through email. They have to have an email marketing plan. They have to have a social media plan. They have to hit you from every single platform. And as on a customer side or a client side or just a person, you know, that you're inundated with so many. Well, how 
how do I tweak my subject line just enough that I might capture them maybe this time? And I think because of that, now we are seeing opportunities for direct mail to really make an impact by cutting through all of that and literally landing in the hands of the person that you're trying to connect with. Mm. If I send you a gift box and it has your name on it and it has your logo on it or my logo or something, you know, and it's in your hands and it's a cookie assortment, I just got your attention. And then, you know, coupled with a gift message directly from me to you that says, I'd love to connect. Let's jump on Zoom, you know, given that we're not meeting in person a lot. But right jump on Zoom, Zoom and have some cookies and connect, you know, like there's just really great opportunities to make that personal connection that goes the extra step that isn't actually, and at least the, our mission is to make it seamless so that it isn't actually that much of a challenge for you to do that. And a huge amount of our uh, clients are doing prospective gifting throughout the year. They're sending, you know, some of them even hundreds of boxes because that is the best way that they found that they can actually get someone to return a phone call or <laughs> right. email. I mean, because you brought joy to their face and then they're like, I have to thank you. And I have to, you know, I'd love to jump on a call. And so gifting really has become an awesome way for people to make that connection and cut through that noise, you know, in the morning when you open your inbox and you're like, well, there's 30 emails I need to delete that I'm not even going to open. So it's, <laughs> It's definitely made a comeback as far as direct mail and then upping the game with like a personalized gift, um, something that has their name on it, a message directly from you to them instead of a blanket generic email is really where we're seeing a lot of value. Well, um, I, we are on with uh, Chelsea Martin and we are we're talking about cutting through the noise and using um, gifts in this in this particular example cookies. Um, I want to talk about the other side of the experience, which is uh, when you have to say you're so sorry, which is customer service. And a lot of our listeners run and are leaders within contact centers and call centers. And I know no one calls you guys to tell you how awesome you're doing. They're always <laughs> calling to say think something goes wrong. Um, I learned something from a guest that was on a couple of months ago. And it made me go spend time with a a therapist friend of mine and because what he connected for me was you want to be good at a customer service talk to a th therapist because the same complaints spouses have about each other is the exact same complaints customers have about the brands they're not listening to me they're not didn't give me what i want all of those things are very thin and so i would love to hear from you on the we talked a little bit about the getting their attention part let's talk about this is now an existing relationship and we have now screwed up, right? Mm -hmm. um, talk a bit about how um, my, I, I think I was looking on your, on your site and, and, and there was talks about cookies saving marriages, which I'm sure is a bit of an exa exaggeration, maybe it isn't. But I think there's, there's got to be applicability on the service recovery side, which is now we have a relationship which is different than a marital relationship but it's it's still a relationship and now it's fractured and mm -hmm. as opposed to just saying and writing um sorry if you can share some examples and tips about how you could utilize something like this mm -hmm. um as a gesture to go up, to go a long ways in helping to heal what might be a fractured point in time in a relationship in a in a business relationship yeah, absolutely. So we've definitely had some uh, clients that utilize us for their, you know, oops gifts or things like that. And it is, um, it's, it's, I think for us, what we've noticed, and we don't get a ton of feedback after the fact, but the fact that our clients do keep using us for this, I do think speaks to the fact that it, they feel that there's value and it is successful in helping recover that relationship. But I think ultimately when it comes to customer service or anything in any industry, owning that mistake goes so far with the customer. Um, you know, there's always going to be exceptions. There's always going to be people that really you cannot fix this or you of can't course. make them happy. Yeah. But owning the mistake is the biggest part that I've noticed in our, you know, in our situations that really gets the person to, you know, kind of calm down and, and 
they just want to be heard, right? And when they don't feel that they're being heard, that's when you get frustrated. So I think owning the mistake, really listening, and then what we've had are clients that do send these gifts and it, after they've made that personal connection, after they've really had the human, you know, the call and not not just kind of said, I'm sincerely sorry for your experience here with XX, you know, whatever company, they don't, people don't want that canned response. So right. I think what we want is, the human connection of me really connecting to you, sincerely apologizing, whether that's on the phone or through email or whatever it is that your route is and your process is, owning the mistake and then using our gifts that, or at least for us, we've had people use our gifts as kind of that follow up to say, you know, again, we're so sorry about this. We really value your relationship. I hope you enjoy these cookies on behalf of the team or something like right. that. And I know that, that sounds kind of, simple and also there's not a lot of like follow-up call to action in the messaging but i think giving something and saying we care about you that that's it you know right really goes a long ways and that actually even happens in our case because we've had you know i'd like to say we're perfect and we do our best to make sure everything's perfect <laughs> but every once in a while you know there's a hiccup whether that's with shipping or something like that and you just want to even if it's not we're in a unique industry where we create the product, we customize the product from, from top to bottom. We right. are customizing everything in-house from baking to customization of the gift boxes. All of that's us. But once we hand that box off, that is at the mercy of our carrier right. and and the weather and, you know, all these things. And so for the most part, we don't have a lot of um, issues, but there are some that arise. And so for us, that same we utilize that exact same thing, even though we are the cookie company. <laughs> it, uh, you know what I, because ultimately it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that, you know, the, the weather happened or it doesn't matter that the carrier is the one that didn't drop it off at the right place. You ordered from us. You didn't get the gift that you really needed to get there at a certain time for that person. And so not only did you not make them happy, but now you're upset. So Ultimately, it doesn't matter whose fault it is, but you came to us and you didn't get what you wanted. So we do the same thing. We want to connect. We want to figure out what happened. We want to make sure we can resolve it and say, this is why it won't happen again, or let's take the steps to, to remedy it. But we're immediately out there. You know, we send a box immediately or, or do whatever we can to make that right. And that includes giving them cookies and saying, we really value you. And I have to tell you, one of the things that makes me so happy and like really, really proud of us as a company is the amount of times that we have had a solution or a problem that have a, has arise, arise and we have kept our customers. Like they don't, we, it's been extremely, extremely rare. I mean, in the last five years of us being a company on, on my hand, maybe one hand, I think of wow. that we've lost. Customers. I've had somebody you know, go from I'm upset that something didn't arrive to in, I'm not kidding you, 60 seconds ordering 14 more boxes from us. <laughs> and it was, and, it, and then reviewing us and saying their customer service is amazing. And all that really was, was me calling them and just saying, right. here's what happened. We're going to make it right for you. And, and we're already in the process of doing it. And that's what people want to hear. And I think we're in such a crazy disconnected place right now that the bar is, has been set lower because everyone's so busy right. that really going that extra mile, it makes somebody feel heard. And that's all it is at the root of everything is people want to feel heard. I, I couldn't agree more. So I, I, one last question and I would let you go, which is, you know, you're an entrepreneur and, um, and I am too, and it's not easy, right? You know, the joke is you quit your 40 hour week job to go take on an 80 hour week job is what entrepreneur could be. And so I'm sure there's been, difficult days, ups and downs. Tell me the moment I'm trying to get at what, what drives you to continue going. What was the moment where you said um, I, I, to your husband or whoever and said, gosh, we've got something here. What was that thing that said, man, we are doing this thing. It's making this difference. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to give me all the energy I need to keep going. What was the what was your moment over these five years that you said, yeah, this is it. <laughs> there, yeah, the, and there have been a few along the way, just depending on where we were in our company as as we were developing. And I think the very, very first one that happened was more of it felt. It's so funny because every year you reevaluate and you realize that you have 
new challenges. Like right. so, so every year our holiday season is the most intense season for us because that is when a lot of the gifts are coming in. I think people send gifts throughout the year, but everyone sends gifts through on the holidays. So um, we eventually outgrew the home and we ended up getting a commercial kitchen. And in that time we had, it was kind of like, I call it the goldfish like moment of, you know, this space is this big, but the goldfish is this big. And eventually the goldfish will grow to the space or the environment. But so we had had that kind of weird transition of like, we have this bigger space. Are we going to be able to, to do this, you know? And, uh, and I felt like it was a movie where we were just not known at all, at all. And, uh, and it's crickets in our, in our office. It's just silence. And the holidays are coming up and we're thinking, you know, okay, maybe we'll get something. And I swear to you that Monday after Thanksgiving, it was like the Ghostbusters where like the phone just kept ringing off the hook and it was nonstop. And it was just, is it too late for holiday gifts? Is it too late? You know, can I still get these in in time? And we were over here thinking, yeah, you have more than enough time. Uh, But we didn't realize there was that shift where all of a sudden it happens overnight. And so I went overnight from thinking, I don't know what's going to happen here. How are we going to keep the lights on to, oh, wow. Okay. Like that, we need to pull all nighters to make this happen, you know, so which was a really amazing feeling for somebody, especially, you know, a small company that's struggling. I'd I'd prefer to pull an all nighter, you know, than than have silence. And I think that was one big one, just that was very heartwarming for us. Um, as a family, because we're a family owned business. So to see that kind of happen, we're like, okay, we're getting traction. And that's happened every year. In I mean, it's on a bigger scale, but every year as we've grown. And then I think simultaneously, just as a short little anecdote, um, another thing that just like warms our heart and also kind of keeps us thinking like, wow, we're doing something is when we hear stories from other people about how they use our gifts in ways that helps their business in ways that actually helps them grow because that was our mission. And even though it took a while to, to figure out exactly where we fit in this world and in this gifting industry, seeing that we aren't just a, you know, not a, a second thought gift, but we aren't just like a, Oh, send a gift basket. Like pe- there are specific people out there sending our gifts because they know that this has given them a return or helped them grow their business or, you know, helped them develop these relationships with uh, clients or colleagues. And, and those things actually really do resonate with us because that's when you get into it with the company and you're, you're really, you know, how your blinders on and your head is down and your focus. Um, sometimes when you come up for air, it's nice to hear that it's like actually working and that people are using you for what you want because it's easy to get lost in the, day to day, you know, hustle and grind. But, um, but those things really helped us feel like, wow, we're on track. We're doing what we set out to do. And, you know, how can we keep this going and keep growing? Wow. Wow. Well, um, I've had um, Chelsea Martin with me. um, And uh, we're going to have her in for online. She's with uh, NOMS and they, they uh, ship deliciousness around <laughs> around the country so um please connect with her we'll put our information there and uh we will be back next week thank you all for listening and chelsea thank you so much for for being on the show today thank you so much for having me and until next time remember the experience is either random or intentionally curated i'll talk to you soon thanks for listening to the curated experience with amas Tanuma. if you like what you just heard we hope you'll join the conversation online by visiting us at curatedcx.com or at amastanuma.com. That's C-U-R-A-T-E-D-C-X dot com or A-M-A-S-T-E-N-U-M-A-H dot com. And please invite your friends and colleagues to visit our website or iTunes where they can check this and previous podcasts. This has been a Bian LLC production. Check us next time for another edition of The Curated Experience.